So here's some action figures. Uh, I think in a prior video, I showed you some figures I had gotten from Solo, A Star Wars Story. This is the Tobias Beckett figure. The character Woody Harrelson played. Which is one of the nicer figures. And this is the uh, Lando Calrissian figure. Which was probably the standout character in the whole movie. And uh, so I wanted to sort of finish up their cruise. So for Beckett I got Rio Durant is his pilot and Val his his uh, partner and girlfriend and for Lando Calrissian I got his droid assistant L337 and I also had in a prior video shown you my Ant-Man figure so to round him out I got the wasp and I also got a um, Uncar Plutt from The Force Awakens and a Jawa. So I don't think I'm going to open this because I really absolutely love the way this Jawa looks in the packaging. And being that it's a Jawa, I mean, we kind of already know what to expect on the figure itself, although it does look like it has fantastic articulation. I'm just going to keep this on the card just because I like it so much. It's the, probably the best figure from that whole sort of unfortunate Rise of Skywalker wave where these are the only Rise of Skywalker figures you're getting <laughs> because they never made a, a dedicated Rise of Skywalker line. So you got that slightly different ray. You got a repackage of Poe. You've got uh, Zori Bliss, who was Felicity. Um, you got a Sith Jet Trooper and a Sith Trooper that were in the movie and didn't really do anything. And you got a Knight of Ren, one of the Knights of Ren who also were in the movie and didn't do anything. So um, if you want to know about the whole collapse of the Star Wars action figure industry, there's lots of videos on YouTube that you can look for. But yeah, it, it didn't do very well. Um, this is one of the remnants of that last of the Great Force Fire Fridays. Well, actually, this one didn't make Force Friday, but this was from the the Phantom Menace. I'm, I'm sorry, the Force Awakens, and um, th probably the last movie that really sold action figures. And this baby feels like it's fixing open itself. Now, in terms of Solo, I I really did like the figures. I feel like it was the last movie that had decent action figures. I like them all. Um, I thought they were all just cool and and uh, the movie. I know the movie itself didn't do all that hot, but I've got no complaints about the figure line. I mean, they're cool, they're colorful, they they are interesting characters. I mean, they got little dogs and everything. I really like it. So I was excited to get the new Solo figures. I was excited to get the Wasp figure, and I'll show you why. And the Jawa, well, it's classic Star Wars. This is a Jawa from, from you know, the first 1977 Star Wars movie, which I'm going to keep on the card. I just like it. So I'm going to put that one away. And I guess I'll start with um, the solo figures. So this is my current collection of solo. The only ones I'm really missing are the stormtroopers with the the little fur collars and uh, the um, the Chewbacca with the slightly different bandolier. But I think I've got all the and and also the uh, Emphis Nest, the uh, the the rebel uh, in the end. But I think I've got the uh, a pretty good variety. I, I really love this Chewbacca. This is the muddy Chewbacca that Han meets in the bottom of the pit with the, the chain around his, his leg. And uh, this is the muddy Han in his Imperial uniform. Uh, I like this one a lot too.
this is uh who's it Kira I think I just call her Khaleesi you know the uh, Emilia Clark Emilia Clark figure but they did a pretty good face sculpt on her and this is I just like the figure I I, I think that it's all makes a nice set so yeah and Lando whoop with his cape and everything, I mean, it's just pretty cool. I like this figure a lot too. So, um, I guess I'll start with um, L337. She is the, the sort of uh, opinionated droid that was uh, Lando's co-pilot on the Millennium Falcon. And on the back, this is, okay, this is the new wave of uh, figures where it's just so bare bones. I mean, it's the basic articulation. They don't even have, like, a little biography on the back. Um, they just promote that Force Link bracelet thing. And they used to at least have, like, a little snippet of information about who, like, if you didn't watch the movie, who the character was to get you sort of interested in the character. But they don't even do that. At least they're not including, like, these dumb little things anymore that no one that just cluttered up I mean all we really care about is the figure I do like the artwork on all three of these I, I like the, the style of the art Okay, so here's the figure, and so far, I, I really love the way this figure feels. Uh, the articulation is really good. I think you snap, you can snap these little pegs in to the legs or you can maybe even remove the legs to oh my goodness I think you can you can actually remove the legs to sort of recreate her her demise uh, which is a little morbid but they did do that so you could have her just the torso with her legs blown off that's why but otherwise these limbs snap into the legs if you see there's a there's a little hole so that's interesting I think they do Yeah, I think they're supposed to. There's little holes for these to plug into. There's one. But if you bend the legs, it'll eventually pop out. Still a very detailed figure. There's a ball joint in the neck and then another one at the base of the head. So you have a lot of movement. Then you've got swivel shoulders and then the swivel hips, but that's it. 
So this is Lando's co-pilot. The feet don't have a, a lot of uh, a lot going on, so hopefully this will stand. Hmm. It's a very well done figure. I will give it that. It's very well done. Um. Well, let's do. Val. Interesting thing. Uh, who's that Joe? Uh, it's interesting how Disney is prominent on this one, but Kenner is prominent on this one, and they just have Disney right here next to Hasbro. It's interesting how, but on these figures, they are kind of promoting the Disney. I think on the vintage, I think that has a lot to do with the vintage. See if you can feel the old figures. So this is Val, and this is... Uh, Tandy Newton's character and um, you, the Tandy Newton you might know from Westworld or one of my favorite movies Jefferson in Paris and they did a great great face sculpt I mean that is really good I'll give it that once they the the amount of detail in this is good but it also restricts the motion of the figure like there's this tube going under her elbow so if you move her arm too much that's going to disconnect and i think that's her trigger hand so this arm has more motion then there's this tube connecting her belt all the way back here like it's some kind of harness or something so there's a lot going on with this figure that does restrict the motion a little bit. Which makes these probably more fun to display, but not as much fun to... They're not like... Remember what I said about how Masters of the Universe figures were for playing? These are more like for displaying. She comes with this uh, long pistol blaster. The figure itself is, is really nice. It really looks good with the rest of the figures. It looks good next to Tobias. He does have swivel hands, which is a little bit more articulation than most of these have. She has swivel hands. This, I guess they all do. That's something. So they have basic seven. <laughs> They definitely put a lot of detail in these figures. That does look like Woody Harrelson. As much as an action figure can look like Woody Harrelson. I think the figure I was most excited about from this line is the Rio Durant. So he was sort of a um, four-armed monkey, kind of. Uh, 
And I'm glad that he has articulation on all four of his arms, which is really cool. Very interesting character, very unique character. Once again, with a lot of these tubes. And they actually have, have wrist articulation, which is a nice touch too. He has a blaster that he can hold in any of his hands. Or you can stow it. That's how you do it. That actually looks really cool in the holster with the little scope going over it. That looks really cool. I like that a lot. I really do like this figure. He has uh, this little bandolier thing that's a separate piece. Um, he's got his boom mic on his face, his goggles, his little breathing apparatus. He, all of his multiple limbs. A six limbed creature. So now we have Beckett's crew, which is pretty cool. Like I said, the only thing I'm really missing now with my solo collection would be uh, one of the stormtroopers. And I mean, there's a lot, you could get lots of figures, but as far as the main characters, I think I'm not missing very much to make a complete sort of collection now. And this really great Chewie. I really like this Chewbacca. These are all very cool figures. So this is my growing uh, solo collection. I'm going to move these aside now. Okay, now, as you know, uh, I like Ant-Man. I like this figure a lot. I like posing him just like this with the helmet, even though that's actually an alternate head. Uh, they did a great Paul Rudd face sculpt. I mean, just pretty amazing. And it's just a sort of a funny but awesome looking figure because he's definitely m one of the more comic of the Marvel superheroes. And, um, oops. And you can remove the head and put on the Ant Man helmet, which looks great. So, naturally, I wanted a Wasp figure to go with my Ant-Man figure. So, I actually bought two of these, and one of these is for my friend, so I already opened it. And I'm going to show you the figure and everything it comes with. So... With the figure, you get um, a wasp. It comes out with uh, two sets of hands, a very cool helmet, a set of wings, also a, uh, a Build-A-Figure head. For The Build-A-Figure is for Call Obsidian. And uh, here's the description on the back. Hope Van Dyne gears up with signatures, stingers, and high-tech wings as the buzzworthy hero wasp. And, um... It looks great in the packaging. 
two types of hands. Like I said, she has the fist hands or the flying hands. The wings are movable. You can put them in that configuration down. Or like that. Sort of like... Uh, that also looks pretty good. There's just different ways you can pose it. It looks good in a lot of different configurations. The uh, the pack fits pretty snugly, but will come off fairly easy too. And you can change it out to a where the wings are stowed if you want to pose it like that. One thing I really do love about this figure is the mask because it's in a few pieces and you can see her eyes behind the glass which is really a cool effect you just don't see that on very many figures I thought at first that maybe you could pop this off into your face but I don't think so I think it needs to stay on so I wouldn't recommend trying to do that her articulation is she has a ball hinge shoulder, ball hinge elbows, wrists that also have hinges on it, a uh, uh, hinge in the chest, ball hinge hips, and then a swivel, cut swivel in the hips here. Uh, kneecaps uh, ball hinged ankles just great articulation to put her in a lot of great poses now I'm gonna show you the different head and hand configuration The head and hands comes off much easier than uh, previous Marvel Legends figures, so you can do it without worrying about breaking anything. They've definitely improved the ability to put these on without breaking a piece. So here she is with the sort of karate chop or flying hands or whatever you want to call it. And one complaint I have is... Whereas, if you put Paul Rudd's head back on, that looks great. I mean, you have a neck, you have, uh, it looks, it looks right. It looks natural. But with Evangeline Lilies, the head just seems kind of unnatural. Like, maybe too big for the body. It's a good face sculpt to be sure but and even from the side it, it just looks a little freakish um like i said they did a a good face sculpt But the head just looks a little weird on the body. You might be able to get it in a pose that looks a little better. Like that might look a little bit better. When you sort of um, diminish some of the the body a little bit. Because I just feel like the head is a little too big for the body. But that's a, that's a good pose. And what, one thing I love about Marvel Legends figures is you can get them into these really great action poses. Like comic books.
that's one thing that really makes these good quality figures. I mean, they, of course, with his goofy face, they definitely look like comedy characters, and more so when you figure. <laughs> I mean, almost all of the Ant-Man characters, with the exception of her, uh, look like they're in a comedy. <laughs> I mean, and this, he is, his whole point in Ant-Man was comic relief, and, um, but it's a funny figure to display, and of course he comes with the Pim's lab in a travel size version and the and the tight ill fitting blazer when he was trying to market XCON. But the face sculpts on these are just without question just some of the best. I mean just really, really good. Whoops. The Marvel Legends has the break before it breaks. In other words, it will um, it will snap apart before it will break, which is a nice little fail safe. So if you're posing and you pose too hard, it'll come apart before you actually break something, which is good. So you're not destroying your figure. But these definitely look like comedy figures if you compare them to the other serious superhero figures that you can get out there or her and um, even in other franchises, the comic figures weren't given so much comedy. I guess when they're making a Paul Rudd figure, though, they just can't keep it serious. Now I'm going to have to pose these and get them all back to how I had them. But uh, I hope you enjoyed looking at them. So my um, opinion on the Wasp is... She's... A really a really good figure you have to get her in the right pose to make her head work but uh, other than that the detailing the painting the features uh, you getting your money's worth on this one if you go to Walgreens well I don't know if it's still going on as of the when you watch this video but if you have a Walgreens card you can get any Marvel Legends figure for $9.99 which is a really good deal for what you're getting if you want a figure that's just superb detail paint face sculpt, accessories, posability, then you can't do much better than Marvel Legends. I mean, these figures are probably the standard right now of good quality action figures of recognizable franchise characters that are durable, that are, are just well made. Y you... You know how sometimes you buy a figure and you have to just go, you have to look and look and look to make sure you're getting a good paint job and everything. You don't really have to do it with these. You can just grab the character you want and be pretty confident that what you're going to bring home is, is going to be the quality you expect. So, that's, I mean, the paint is so good. You, you just have to try to find a mistake on it. And the face sculpts are so good. Even look at the ring on his finger. I mean, they don't even miss details. It's pretty amazing. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, 
I will keep making them. So uh, please uh, rate and comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and uh, and I will see you again. Bye.